how you should outsource work to the Philippines. First thing I want to say is I've been doing it for about three years now and although I don't come from a telesales, telemarketing background, we operate a successful call center that does telemarketing and telesales as well as transcription, web design, graphic design, video editing, all sorts. But there's a key element here, which is where people go wrong when they stick things on Elancer, Guru.com, blah, blah, blah. Because what happens is people turn around and they'll just go, bang, there's the money, go and do it. In business, how often do you do that with your customers? Do a customer just go to you, bang? Unless you're working in McDonald's where they just want fries and a burger or something, it doesn't build a relationship. What you're actually looking for is communication. You want the guy to go, all right, I want a website design. Okay, let's sit and break this down for you. What type of website? What's it got to do? What are you selling? Are you selling widgets? Are you doing it? Because if you don't, and this is culturally a problem in Asia, people will say yes to everything. And can you do Yes, I can do that. Can you do me a website? Yes, I can do it. But they won't go, Hang on, before I start spending ages trying to work out exactly what you want, why don't you tell me what you're after? Give me a few websites that look similar to the sort of thing you're looking for. You go, okay, I like the layout of this one, but I prefer this sort of graphics on this one. That sort of relationship often doesn't come out of the outsource stuff. The next one is the bigger stuff, because I dealt with these Muppets on a corporation level where they've outsourced everything and they've gone to Bangalore and go bang give them to them they say they're an IT company they can handle all our help desk they can handle all our IT equipment they can deal with all our problems and then you're calling up and going oh, hello and they don't even know the basics of even a flowchart because what's happened is that guy that said yes we're a company in Bangalore has just got his first major client and it's you. Before that he was doing telemarketing with about two people, his brother and his sister. And what happens is you end up with a complete nightmare fiasco that nobody even talks about because the corporations won't go, that was a bad idea. They'll go, we only do positivity. So what happens with that? There's hidden costs that nobody talks about. I've had these discussions and people ignore me on it, but here's here's my reality. Spending three days with a laptop down in a corporate world that only operates on corporate networks, etc., where they want you to do everything on their corporate systems, on their corporate laptop, across their corporate cloud, and you can't even log into Windows because the corporate laptop won't even switch on and it takes three days, they see the person fixing it only cost 30, 30 pounds to do it. The guy in India that took 30 pounds for three days to fix something, it only takes five minutes from somebody actually knew what they were doing. Where they missed all the uh, fiasco and hidden costs that they don't really want to see is I'm 800 pounds a day. It's literally cost two thousand four hundred pounds for that laptop plus the thirty pounds because I've been down for three days I get you know I've got other bits and pieces to do but the reality is my work has stopped work on contracts that are vary from about minimum is about eight hundred thousand pounds probably up to about the biggest one was eighty million and my bottleneck, my Achilles heel, is a little guy in India that doesn't know how to do the IT because his boss said, yeah, we can do that. We're already accredited for this, that, and the other. We have all our certificates. We printed them off from Photoshop this morning. Um, but the, the important bit here is that's not the way to outsource. Outsourcing is through people like myself. I go to the Philippines. I live in the Philippines. I'm in contact with 20 plus call centers in the Philippines and I know which call centers do which things. I know which call centers do PayPal for example. I know which call centers do eBay and which ones do 
uh, credit card processing for some of the bigger credit card companies. I know which ones do merchant processing. I know which ones do uh, web design, web development, web web whatever. It, the main thing here is I know who to find, how to find them, and they're not yes men because the thing is I go there I will not sell a product that I don't believe in. So if you turn around and said, Matt, I need somebody to manage our help desk. We've got 20 people in the UK to do it. And we're getting rid of the building. The lease is coming up. We're going to make it more redundant. Um, but 10 of those are going because they're already retirement age anyway. The other 10 will actually find some jobs in the system somewhere through other contracts for administration or whatever. But the whole point is we need to move that help desk. First thing is it will not take 20 Filipinos to replace 20 people in the UK. The reason being is they don't know the business. They don't know John, the uh, maintenance guy at such and such address that the guy who's currently on the IT help desk has known for the last 10, 15 years. So here, the, uh, that relationship doesn't exist yet. So it will not take 20. It could take 40. But at the same time, 40 Filipinos will still be cheaper than 20 people in the UK. Because the first thing you've got is the building costs in the UK are phenomenally high. They're extortionate, you know, for commercial buildings. So even if you took the cost of a lease on a large building... A lot of the time, just the lease and cost related to the building itself can be the cost of the Filipino staff. So I know it sounds crazy, but it, it's that expensive in the UK. You know, if, you're, if you've got an office in central London, it's going to cost you a lot. And if you've got it somewhere else, a lot of the um, propping up of council pensions and that sort of thing comes from business rates. So the business rates are high, rents high, running costs are generally high. Where in the Philippines, it's a lot, lot cheaper. I mean, I was talking to somebody recently that are either going to open in Manila and Cebu, and I sat sat down and said to them, "Look, how much are you going to pay in Manila?" And it works out that Cebu, with the right setup, will cost them about a third of what it would have cost for Manila you know, in Makati. These are cost-cutting exercises where you need to understand the local area. You need to understand what's the fiber optic options. Can I get a direct lease line? Can I get the facilities to actually operate a proper call center? Is there a call center that can manage the work for me? Or is there somebody I need to hire for this? And this is where the, the differences are between just hiring somebody in to do, oh, I'll just get somebody to do our website that's offshore. I'd say if you just want something small like that, I would hire somebody locally. Unless you have a relationship with somebody like myself that's actually currently in Spain, but got a strong network in the Philippines, strong network in the UK, and most importantly, a strong network with people that can actually do the work. Because I understand the Filipinos, I understand how they work, I know, I know their processing. The same with the Indians, because I work with the Indians in the Middle East. And those things are often missing, because project management and team management is often not even thought of. Because a lot of people assume, I'll get John to do that. You know, like I was saying, we're closing this uh, call center down, yeah, this help desk in the UK, we'll send John over to the Philippines. He will nosedive. There, there's no way he could run an operation in the Philippines. He would not understand the mentality, the knowledge, the productivity levels. It's all very different, extremely different. And unless you actually understand the differences between different cultures and their, the way they operate, you're going to fail. You will always fail. Even talking with some of the guys I know from India, that open operations in Makati, they will tell you that they struggled for the first year or so because they didn't understand the culture. 
Um, there's a lot of things they thought was, well, this will work, and it just fl fell flat on its face, you know, training people up, and then they just quit. And it's like, why did they just quit? We, you know, they've got a good job with it. But the next call center is offering another 500 pesos or 1,000 pesos a month, so they just jump ship. There's ways to beat that, but only if you understand the culture. So I hope this actually helps. But the whole point is, you need people like myself. I'm not, I mean, I am available, but there, there are people already in the Philippines, like myself, that can do this, where we can actually run whatever you need. I mean, I've got Carlos in Cebu at the moment that's actually running some operations for Australia. Um, Philip's there as well at the moment running some other contracts for the US the fact is I already have the established network and it doesn't matter what it is because if you come to me and I understand what you're doing or selling I can understand how I'm gonna make that work for you because I do have that knowledge I do have the experience and on top of that I run some very very large contracts um, some of my largest contracts have had over a thousand employees and from all, all walks of life, all levels and they've been oil field, they've been for banks, they've been for hospitals, all sorts. The, the fact is I know culturally how to deal with people, I know how to deal with different technologies, I know where we can look at something if you say right I've got this problem how do we get this to work we can work through it and I know this is a bit of a plug for me today, but at the same time, other people I know are looking at this in the same way I am, that if you're just going to outsource something, get somebody you can trust to actually set it up for you. Because I've seen so many people make so many mistakes over the years, and then they turn around and blame Filipinos, Indians, Pakistanis, whoever it is. The reality is they didn't outsource properly. And understanding, like I said, the yes culture, where everyone just goes, yes, regardless, can you do that? Yes. And five minutes later, they dismantle something, and you're going, what are you doing? And they go, I don't know. And then run away crying or something. It's because you need to understand the culture. All right, thanks for watching.